another thing we have is we have quite a few mental health first aiders so, and the team know who they are and they get used a lot and they are fully aware to look out for people that are just having a little bit you know of day or whatever <laughs> Amazing. So I'm really excited about this conversation. Obviously, you and I have spoke before and we're going to go into more detail today. And really, I guess what we're talking about is team effectiveness. We're talking about how to develop a positive culture within a nursing team. And you've had some wonderful experience and success with that recently. So I think somewhere I'd like to start is something I was curious about to get your opinion on. In your experience, what do you think nurse managers and leaders are focusing on too much or too little so what what are the things that they perhaps maybe should be focusing on but they're actually focusing their attention and energy and resources onto this other thing I think I'm lucky in the trust that I work for they really have listened to our staff questionnaire and well-being came up quite top priority but I think sometimes that money gets invested in corporate policies and corporate things that are going on. And we have lots of places to go to, like Mind and Connect and things. But I think we need things on a more local level, in a more of a team base, really. I think a lot of these things people have to access out of their workplace quite often because we're a community trust we'd have to travel a long way or you do it over teams which isn't you know if you've got crisis or emotional things going on it's nicer to talk face to face so I think it's brilliant that that we have got lots of resources to tap into but I think more emphasis needs to be on teams and at a local level there's something about the support that's being offered being somewhat removed from actually the day-to-day concerns and distress yeah. perhaps of the actual team and that that approach feels kind of catch-all it doesn't feel like it's very tailored or bespoke for what your people actually need yeah I think because people if they were going to access those services they feel like they've got to have a really big event going on they have to be really suffering with, you know, they have to be off sick or, you know, really suffering with something that's been recognised by their GP. Whereas, you know, we all face stress, you know, things like that every day. So I think if you've got it more at a local level, it becomes more second nature for people to talk about how they're feeling or to express how they're feeling. And it's not such a big deal. It's just, you know, becomes everyday practice, really. Yeah, I guess one of the problems we have is that after COVID as well, there's, there is more awareness of there being high levels of distress and psychological difficulties in the healthcare workforce in general. Yeah. And there's the problem we have, I guess, in society in general is trying to firefight and have kind of tertiary services to work with people who've already developed these serious difficulties. But yeah. I guess what you're talking about sounds much more like on a local level, what are the day-to-day things we can do yeah. to be managing day-to-day stresses, to help people feel heard, understood, empathise with, to actually prevent that stuff happening in the first yeah. place. Yeah, I think if you can target if, if, as a team, if you can all be coming together and not worry about things you're saying or how stressed we are, then you feel more relaxed and obviously those services at a high level are really needed and there's some issues that you know you really can't solve at sort of local level but I think a lot of the things the day-to-day things the stresses that we experience can be helped with your team members and uh, you know all just working together. So we will dig in then into specifically what you've been doing in your team. So do you want to just give a little bit of context as to what the service is and your role to begin with? Okay, so our service, I work for Aaron PCN, which is a community nursing team, district nurses and community nurses. I'm actually the team leader. I've been with the team for the last 10 years. I started as a band five and came band six and so on. So I'm now team leader and we've always been a very close-knit 
team anyway. I went away for a little while. I was a practice nurse, development nurse. And then I got this role. And when I came back, it was just after COVID. And where we were, we're a big team. There's about 40 of us with admin and, and everything. And where we were, there are, it's just a corridor and we have lots of rooms. We don't have one big open area. We have lots of little offices dotted around everywhere. So after COVID, a lot of people weren't coming into the office or people hadn't seen each other for months on end. And I just remember the days when we had handover update, as we call it. That was an opportunity to, yes, obviously handover, update everyone on all your patients. But also it was a time just to see how people were and just kind of, you know, judge whether you're having a good day or bad day. And all that had been missed. So I kind of tried to think of ways to bring the team together I was always walking around all the the rooms and checking everyone was okay and there'd be people hiding in some rooms didn't want to see people and so it was quite difficult so I just you know tried to rack my brains as to what would make all this you know come together a bit so first of all I got a grant from the wellbeing trust and in our trust and we got a whole load of plants from quite an exclusive plant so I was it was lovely to get the money I was like went on a brilliant shopping trip but we got plants for every room and these plants were ones that are meant to put calming things into the atmosphere but also take out any toxins in the atmosphere and they've gone down really well people so each office has got a plant and it's a little bit of a competition to see whose plant will survive and one of my plants unfortunately died so that was like a bit unfortunate but you know the plants are doing really well and I think it's just that that in itself just brought people together and it was just a bit of a talking point and then I moved on to just thinking what we could do to kind of just again just bring everyone together and my senior manager had mentioned to me one of her teacher friends had said they run this scheme called guardian angel and I thought oh that that would be really good and guardian angel is where you put everyone's name into a hat of the team and everyone picks out a name and you don't let anyone else know who you've got or that person And it started off that you might just make that person a cup of tea if you noticed they were having a bit of a rough day or you really, it's really just looking out. It's kind of like a buddy, but you don't know who it is. So you might get a little note on your desk or, but then people started buying presents and really thoughtful gifts. If someone was having a rough day, if someone had something to celebrate. So we actually now have a little basket, guardian angel basket And people just put things in there for their buddy. And people have got amazing gifts. It's, you know, mugs with nice thoughts on it or, you know, just down to some chocolate or lots of different things. And because we always like to say, you want to say thank you to whoever's bought you, but we don't know who's bought it. On our WhatsApp group, you quite often just get people saying, thank you so much, Guardian Angel. So that person knows that it's really appreciated so that's worked really well and we're in our second year of doing that after the first year we all had to try and guess who our guardian angel was but Mm -hmm. nobody could guess nobody got it and then we had to yeah I know everyone does it very secretively and things and not let anyone know so that's really really good so then so that was going down really well and then I saw on Twitter a mental health nurse somewhere had was talking about sort of coloring and mindfulness things and I thought you know it'd be really nice to make one area of the offices into kind of like a reflective corner so I got a very big poster that you could color in got some coloring pens I've got some little little doodle books and we have affirmations and things in this little area and it's, I must say, I didn't think people would use it, but it's really used. And it's so lovely that people, when they're, sometimes when people have, are having a rough day and they're chatting with someone, they'll both be standing at this poster, just sort of colouring and talking. And, you know, there, a lot of it's been coloured in. So that's 
lovely you know if someone does need some time out it's somewhere to go and sit and just get their thoughts together you know because sometimes we've just had you know a bad morning there's nothing we really need to talk about we just need to get our heads together we're really lucky down here being by the sea that I used to find that I used to drive by the sea and just stop and look out to see for a little while and that would sort of gather my thoughts so we kind of need areas that we can just come back down to ourselves really so that's been lovely and then we kind of just moved on to all sorts of caring things really we've got a well-being box that's full of has hair bands in it has sanitary product headache tablets chocolates lots of just essential things and as with everything there's no one rep- one person responsible for any of it once it's kind of once all these things have been implemented they kind of run themselves all the staff run them all together so with the well-being box people will just bring things in or if someone uses something they will replace it or somebody might think oh that would be nice to have in that box and put it in there so you don't need someone it doesn't take anyone's time up to do any of these things it's you know they all just work beautifully together and so future plans I really want to get some I really want to do some more teamwork things and going to ask the well-being fund again for some money to get some outdoor games like a big Jenga and a big Connect Four and maybe play some rounders because although we've you know it's been lovely since we implemented all these things everyone comes back for an update now we've had to split it into two because there's too many of us to be in small rooms but no one does update from home at all anymore which is lovely everyone comes into the office everyone you know looks out for each other and will point out if someone is having a bit of a rough day will say to me or one of the seniors oh you know I think they just need a, you know a chat or something but like I say quite often I just see people standing at the colouring or standing you know going to the reflective place and just chatting together another thing we have is we have quite a few mental health first aiders and the team know who they are and they get used a lot and they are fully aware to look out for people that are just having a little bit you know of day or whatever and obviously we also have all our phone numbers up of all the outside services and all the services the trust you know supplies because like I said at the beginning there is a a big place for those as well and you know some people you can't just solve things on a a day-to-day local level so we have all those phone numbers and all everything anyone can contact those so yes that's what we're doing and it feels amazing yeah it feels like a lot but you know it's so lovely that the whole team just run it you know it's no hassle to anyone it's so easily implemented and has no upkeep at all so yeah it's, I'm very lucky and what, one of the things about a workplace culture is that kind of thing of this is how we do things around here and it really sounds like you've created that so this yeah. is just how we do things around here it's not leadership management are telling us to do it so that's no. what we're doing it's we yeah. We, we look out for each other. You said yeah. that, didn't you? Yeah. Everyone's yeah. looking out for each other now. Yeah, very much so. It's so lovely. You know, nursing, as we all know, is such a stressful, difficult job, especially these days in the community. We're getting much more complex patients. We have loads of deferrals every day, which leads to quite angry patients. And, you know, my team of nurses are going out and having to deal with that on a daily basis on an hourly half hourly basis of you know so if you have a morning where every person you turn up to is cross and down and you know it's it just it rubs off on you and you know we I want our nurses to feel that they go in you know if we look after our team then our patients are being you know really well looked after because you know a confident happy team gives good patient care so it does benefit our patients and helps our staff because like I say it's stressful out there and it's kind of like I want them to feel like they come back to their safe place they come back and they can just 
kind of go, ah, you know, this has been going on and no one judges or, you know, thinks, oh, they've lost it or or they need help kind of, you know, it's just how we are as humans. We need to let those emotions out. So, yeah. I think what really strikes me is how you've really focused on some of our basic human needs Mm. in your workplace. You know, you focused on safety, psychological safety and creating a climate in which people feel safe to come back to. It's a safe haven. Like you said, it's a threatening environment out in the community, isn't it? Yeah. Being dealing with anger and abuse and sometimes maybe even physical the yeah. threat of or yeah. physical abuse from people yeah. yeah and knowing you have a safe space to come back to is yeah. something that is so important which I think a lot of people probably don't really consider yeah I you know I I've always seen because I've worked for the team for a long time and I've always seen this as a good happy place and that's why when I came back after and I know COVID had really disjointed a lot of you know a lot of teams and a lot of things but I was really shocked to see how disjointed the team had become after it being such a supportive and a place that I felt I could go to I had a period of being quite unwell and it was my work colleagues and work that really kept me going and I just felt that was lost so that was kind of my um, motivation behind getting back what we used to do kind of and just extending that and just making it a, not official but a little bit more like you're saying team culture it is this is just this is us this is what we do and I think it has a good reception you'd have to talk to the rest of the staff but I'm sure um, you know it does because like I say they work it they do it so mm-hmm. yeah do you have any specific stories or feedback that you can share about th- things that people have shared with you around um, what has been particularly helpful for them? I think the guardian angel has been really, really lovely. I think mm-hmm. it's just even we know ourselves, if you receive just some praise, it just inspires you to do whatever again. And I think the guardian angel, lots of people really appreciate that and have had some, you know, some lovely gifts, but also just some lovely letters just to say, I know how hard you work and I'm sorry if whatever happened or well done for achieving whatever you achieved. So I think staff would say that that probably was a good point. And the plants have been lovely. I think, again, they're all flourishing and it feels like they're like the team, the, it's it's they've given the team have given the plants energy and really looking after their plants well and it's like I say it's a bit of a competition to see who's got the best plants and our proactive care team at the moment are winning they've their plant has just grown and grown but yeah all our offices have amazing plants in so that's been lovely as well I guess it's not just about having plants is it like you said it, it spiraled into this other thing it's yeah it's a sense of connection over yes. the plants and yes. and a drive and motivation to keep something going. It's kind of a metaphor, yeah. way, isn't it? For, yeah, yeah, for very keeping much the so. team going and helping yeah. the team flourish. They're yeah. using the plants to, yeah. Yeah. to kind of enact that, aren't they? Yeah, very much so. It's it does feel like that. You know, you might think, oh yeah, we all have pot plants and you know, it's a very funny thing. But it's really worked. You know, I see and people will say, I've, I've looked after all the plants, you know, if they work in the weekend or it's a holiday time and they're really invested in these plants. And and I think that shows their investment in the team. And like I say, it's not just me from a top level saying we will do this. We will, you know, I want to see this. I don't get involved in it at all, really apart from just pray you know going around and being really thankful for the work that everyone does you know it's the team that are really driving it you know and I think that helps a lot I think something I'd like to dig into a little bit more is the road to going from having a collection of initiatives to it being this self-sufficient thing and I, I know that that is going to come down to the way in which things are introduced and the mindset of the leader or manager and and your attitude towards these things and the relationship you have with your staff. So the way in which you treat your people. So some people might be listening to this thinking, oh, great, like there's that initiative, there's that 
tactic i can try this that and the other but as we both know sometimes these things don't work out they fail yeah so talk to us about you what is it about you and the way you introduced things and maybe some of the little interactions you have on a day-to-day basis with people that has helped all this I think possibly as team lead and everything I've always made sure that the door is open as we all know and but I've always made sure that if I notice anyone but I ask people if they want to come and talk to me so I've always had a very open relationship with the team I'm you know very flexible so if people have got things going on or they need to have some time off quickly then we accommodate that as much as we can obviously the team needs um, the work is paramount but you know you have to be flexible with your team they work so hard and so many of them work over their allotted time and don't came back so we've got a very flexible approach I feel that I'm quite an approachable person that people can come and tell me things I think I'm just I like to look for a solution I always feel that there are solutions for everything that's happening out there that if we look hard enough we can find that solution and one thing I forgot to mention which my PA will kill me for is I forgot to mention we also have a wall of good days on our notice boards and that captures everything at home like our pets are it has yoga poses and initially to get those kind of things started like getting posters and things I've really got my PAs and admin staff on board with that because they're in the offices all the time so, and they're very they're with on the computers and everything so it's really trying to get you know staff behind you that know that have a similar interest to you I've got quite a few other team members that love their affirmations or their mindfulness so it's just finding out what people like and what people will sort of go with and just building it up from there really and then letting people run with it you know if things don't work try something new try something different you know that I always have lots of ideas and things going on but now people are coming up like the other staff members come up with ideas as well so it's lovely I think you may not consider yourself this way Helen, or or thought about yourself in this way but to me you sound like a real true compassionate leader there's there's someone who really takes time to understand to listen to to empathize with your staff you're flexible you meet them where they're at you you don't sounds like you don't create a kind of system or culture in which it's very hierarchical you're meeting them at that at their level you are opening your door you said sort of physically yeah. and metaphorically yeah. to, to listen to their concerns and, and your solution focus you're trying to help yeah. work through problems and solutions mm. and at the same time giving people autonomy to do that for themselves yeah and and I think it, this is so important those qualities for creating the culture and climate which you've created which then becomes self-sufficient and people flourish and as you yeah. mentioned earlier that is what leads to better patient outcomes as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. You know, it it certainly, it just brings everyone together. And like I say, we're in a very pressurised NHS under lots of pressure. And, but we need to recognise that. And, and we do recognise it, but quite often we, we don't come up with solutions that staff are actually asking for on the ground floor. So it's, I just see it's really important. The directors of my trust don't get to see how the staff, the personalities of my staff or, or what works. So it's my job really to, you know, work with my staff and, you know, and then let managers know what we're doing and things. And like I say, you know, at the corporate level, all those telephone numbers and websites are so useful but I've found that we don't need to use them as much anymore that everyone is looking after everyone's mental health on a daily basis which is brilliant it's amazing something I'm interested in is do you find yourself having to resist uh, certain pressures or demands or ways of doing things that are coming from above you do you have to kind of interpret that and then 
apl- sort of apply your own way of doing it to meet um, to sort of meet the objectives that you're being given? Not really, because I think I'm very honest with the team because yeah. I really want them to be honest with me. And I think all these things work both ways. So I think, you know, if we have got some pressure on us from above to complete something or to do something a certain way I really like to tell the team how it is and what we've got to accomplish and then discuss with them how how are we going to do this this is what they want how do we go about that so I don't usually I mean there's things obviously as team leads you do protect your staff from you know the ins and outs of little things um, every day that you can deal with but on the whole if it's something that's going to affect the whole team then the whole team need to know and they need to know the truth and they need to know what's expected and if it's extra work it's extra work but we're all taking it on together you know and I feel they can be honest with me and say oh my goodness I can't do that or what are you going on about so I you know as I'm honest with them and I think I've been in the post two years now and a lot of them knew me before but any new staff um you know know that's what how I I am as sort of team lead it really sounds like you respect the people that yeah you very with much and trust and honesty is yeah really important yeah very much so very much so. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this you will listen to this and be thinking oh I wish she was my manager oh <laughs> I know that's but the thing is I don't feel I'm doing anything special it's really odd when people like you've said you yeah. know, you're a compassionate leader because that wasn't my um, intention to be this wonderful leader and excel at whatever. You know, my striving, sort of driving force was to make our team, to our nurses and our patients, you know, lives a bit better, really. So I think I always found that about myself as well. There was such a core value of compassion mm. and. I you know see a lot of my own sort of qualities, things that are important to me, is similar oh, right. to yours. Yeah, yeah. And in previous leadership roles, it's sort of just the way I would do things. Yeah, yeah. Where when people would comment on it, you you sort of I be know. surprised. Say, well, this is I'm not trying anything yeah. different. Yeah. Really. This is this just feels natural, right? Yeah, very much so. I when people say, "Oh, that's amazing," you know, when I did this talk at a showcase day and it got really good reception and you know I'm so proud of it and I'm so proud of the team I don't see that I'm anything special that you know I've done anything special it's just you know it's worked as a team and um, you know it's it's brilliant it's lovely I feel very very humble you know because I don't get to go through the hard things that the staff go through every day so I need to help them you know deal with that i really believe that most people who go into healthcare you know particularly nurses and midwives they they do have all of this stuff at their heart but mm. it's unfortunately it's the systems that we work in that prioritize other things the yeah. wrong things efficiency yeah. and targets and yeah ineffective styles of leadership and things like that which unfortunately suppress people's natural motivation and drive yeah. to, to be compassionate or to care about uh, connecting with people that sort of thing it's, um, it's funny because we connect and we're compassionate to our patient but that's not always we're not with our team members sometimes so you know we need and like you say nurses you know are are compassionate that you know we we do feel and we want to help people so this is really where this has all come from and it's just giving people time to digest that and get used to it and I think we reach targets and accomplish things better now than we did a couple of years ago unfortunately I've got no statistics to prove that but I feel that we are in a much better place than we were a couple of years ago well Helen thank you so much for the work that you do I'm sure your thank team you. are very grateful the patients that they work with might not know it no, but yeah. I'm sure it's benefiting them enormously and for anyone listening to this I'm, I'm sure you've been an inspiration and given some people some really concrete ideas about ways they might be able to improve their team effectiveness and culture of compassion and well-being so thank you so much no, for thank you. joining me thank you